our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, God we confess we have sinned sin against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry to be humbly met for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, for that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins, for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose glory is always to be have mercy, be gracious to all of us, God, and spread in your ways, and bring them again with the many times. To embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth in your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Kings of people shall come from her. 
her the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 22. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, of all offspring of Israel, of all you of Jacob's line, and be glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart be forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord forever. They shall come and make known to the people yet unborn. The saving beings that be the Son. reading from the letter to the Romans. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to
setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of being up my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be For those of you who sort of follow me on Facebook, you may have seen this little thing I, I posted the other day. I found it and I shared it. It says here, when God put a calling on your life, he already factored in your stupidity. <laughs> most comforting thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and that's true. I mean, calling does not sort of mean it suddenly becomes smack. Calling does not mean suddenly you have all of the knowledge necessary in order to do what God has called you into. It's not like you've been given some kind of gnosis. <laughs> A knowledge, a hidden knowledge, and suddenly now you're out there. You're just sweating while you're doing great. It's not like that. In fact, today we find out what with Peter. Peter was called, and then when Jesus says, "Okay, now this is what's going to happen," Peter says, "Oh no, 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 not on my watch, pal. This is not going to happen." Peter's thinking in human terms. Peter's thinking that they're on their way to Jerusalem to do only one thing, or actually a couple of things. First, kick out the Romans. Great military campaign, kick out the Romans. Secondly, to replace all the Pharisees and Sadducees and to retake the temple. In other words, they saw the reconstruction, the rebuilding of the kingdom of David. Jesus basically disabuses him of that notion, that illusion. In fact, Jesus' mission, his calling, after spending 40 days in the wilderness, was not so much to destroy, but to enter into the lives of the people around him. 
When you think about the first time he preaches in a temple, he read, or in a synagogue, he reads from Isaiah. And when he's finished what he says, it's been fulfilled in your presence. Now his blind do receive their sight. The deaf are hearing. The dead are being raised. The mission of Jesus is not to conquer, but to share God's love with God's creation and God's people. Our calling, our calling, is to be that thing, be that for Jesus here on earth. And each one of us, each one of us may have a calling, but you know, it's nothing that I can give you or anybody can give you. It's yours to discern how to best live out that calling. No one can show you, no one can tell you, no one has a book, I got a quote, but no one has a book. And it doesn't mean that suddenly all will be well with your life. In fact, trust me, sometimes a calling brings us closer to our own humanity and to seeing the world in a way in which Jesus was seeing this world. A world filled with hurt and pain. A world divided amongst itself. The things we are called into to be Jesus' disciples, to be followers of Jesus, calls us into a new life. Not a perfect one. And one you're not going to have all the answers. Alright? I want to get that through. You don't have all the answers. In fact, you may have all the doubts. And that is okay also. Because God works in doubts. Remember Thomas. So I read this little thing here. Richard Rohr does writes a weekly call, daily call. And in this one, he quotes Joyce Rupp, who speaks about Jesus' teaching. Being, being called, being stuck, carrying your cross. Says here, we can't just sit on the roadside of life and call ourselves followers of Jesus. We are to do more than esteem him for his generous love and dedicated service. We do not hear Jesus grumbling about the challenges and demands of this way of life. We do not see him talking a good talk, but doing nothing about it. He describes his vision and then encourages others to join him in moving those teachings into action. Moving the teachings of Jesus into action. How do we see that? How are we called into that? How do we live out that? I've been reading this book. It's a good book. It's called Ordinary Grace by Wayne Kent Kruger. I like it. I like the author anyways. He writes sort of mysteries. And they're all they all take place in Minnesota. So but it's it's he's got a lot of spirituality in these books. All of his books. And this one here, this is about it's uh, narrated by the son of a Methodist pastor out there in Minnesota. And it's all about, it's a tragic year. There's been a couple of deaths and things like that. And he's trying to figure this all out. And his dad's a Methodist pastor who does three parishes. Oh. Um, no, no. <laughs> don't, don't even go there. He's basically a, a circuit rider for these three parishes up there in uh, Minnesota. And they just found out that his sister, or his daughter, has been murdered. <coughs> you 
and so the family, the, the life is falling apart, the family is falling apart, and his father is in the parish, and he's praying, and he's sitting at the altar, basically he's sitting down in front of the altar, his back against it, just relaxing, and his father was a, is a World War II veteran, and as a veteran, he saw a lot of things in, in the war, which pushed his life, his calling, from being a lawyer to being a pastor. And now, in comes Gus, and Gus is a former soldier under this priest, under this pastor. And Gus is an alcoholic. And Gus is not doing so great. And Gus is his own demon. He has to fight. And so they're sitting there at the altar. And Gus is speaking to the pastor. Seems to me you're just kind of reeling here, Captain. Like from a punch in the face. When you come around, you'll see that you've been right all along. I know I give you a hard time about your religion, but damn if I'm not grateful at half that you believe it. Somebody's got to. For all the rest of us, Captain, somebody's Somebody's got to believe. So much. Turning out of page 358, must confess that I'm faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, may God from not me, the one being with the Father, through in him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious side. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in the glory of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. And all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. And may be glorified by all people. We pray for the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry, our presiding bishop, the Right Reverend Kevin S. Brown, our diocesan bishop, Bruce Lomas, our priest, vestry group, Viva, Connie, Lee, Alice, George, and Susan. And in the diocesan cycle of prayer, St. Thomas Parish, Newark, the Reverend Dr. Howell C. 
Sasser, Jr., Rector, the Reverend Kevin Clay Brown, Curate, and the Reverend Deacon Sheila Bridge Sharp, Adam Shara Fellowship, that they may be faithful ministers to the words of God. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nation of the nations of the world. We pray for those in the military, Christopher Dawson, Justin Gary, Jamie Grimes, Justin R. Hudson, Russell Knob, Amber Mabry, Jarrett Farmer, Bruce Carroll, Darren Hearn, John Hearn, and Garrett Burst. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. And our mercy on our favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray for the following. Those who are sick or with other issues. John Macy, Shirley Bowden, Jean Moss, Karen Wright, Michael Cluley, Whitney Jones, Kathy Fleming, Regina Miller, Paula Swift, Bernie Dufus, Barbara Fajner, Donald Frazier, Linda Sullivan, Bill Shaw, Emma Fisher, Preston Bowden, Bristol Herr, Don Hearn, Calvin Hill, Lexi Miles, Austin Dean, Jim Creel, Naheem Smith, Will McCauley, Hunt Hackett, Lisa Carrier, Takako Kinney, and Amelia. For good health in older years, Molly Rebels and Pat Baker. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We thank you for your saints who have entered their eternal into joy. May we also come to share your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
us from evil. For the time is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance. Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hands by faith.
Post communion prayer is found on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have led us to spiritual duty in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us down to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinless of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you. In the name of you always. Amen. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.